I'm Brian Bolio, CEO, Chief Economist of ITR Economics, and we have a very special trends talk today. Joining me is a friend, business partner, and co-author, uh, you know, a fellow author, uh, Scott Bushke from Cornerstone. Um, Scott wrote a really good, useful, quick, easy book, and it's hard to get all those attributes cut into one book. And there was a workbook that went along with it. The book is called Finish Strong, and it's really, for me, it was a, it was a how-to from beginning to end, not getting into the minutia, but how to just think about this transition from being the entrepreneur, the business owner, to um, getting on with the rest of your life when that phase uh, is over with and doing so successfully. And the subtitle to your book is On Your Terms. And I think that was a critically important part of it also. So... Scott, what, what was the genesis for the book? What, what, why did you uh, want to write this book? Yes, thank you. And thanks, Brian. Uh, you know, I've been in this industry for almost 25 years now of helping business owners sell their companies in the M&A world. And I just see the stats and in, in seeing our own clients that they just don't plan soon enough. And they just, you know, so many of them wake up one day and they have a successful company, but they just wake up one day and go, it's not fun anymore. It's time to sell the business. Don't know how, when, or why they're going to get out. And this is typically their largest financial transaction of their life. And if it goes well, they can live one lifestyle. And if it doesn't sell, like so many businesses don't sell, uh, they live a much different lifestyle after, you know, dec typically decades of, of blood, sweat, and tears. So I wanted to try to create all the things I've seen and all the experiences I've shared and, and learned into a simple, easy read book that uh, not only took it from a holistic picture of, of not just how do, how do I maximize value, which there's a lot of books out there like that, but really how to think about, you know, when is the right time to get out? How should I get out? What are my different options? Um, how do I emotionally separate myself from the company and, and what's important to me and so many other things. And not just to have a book, but also to have this workbook. Cause I, I'm an entrepreneur. I've, you know, I've read so many books and, you know, you read so many, you put it down and go, yeah, I'll get that idea tomorrow. And then tomorrow never comes. So I wanted to try to have it where you read a chapter and then you go and do a little homework assignment and you go back and forth. So you actually have that business owner take actionable steps, whether right. they're 10 months or 10 years away from exiting their company, just starting to think about some of these things. Because again, most people just don't plan soon enough. And that's why so many businesses don't successfully sell. And, and uh, it's, it's just a shame to see. So we're trying to change that, uh, that narrative on the closing ratio across the country. I think you did a great job in the book. Um explaining that you can have a successful business, a successfully running business, but that doesn't mean it's ready for sale. Uh, those are really the different animals uh, and prepping something for sale isn't something you're gonna do in three months because you're tired or something catastrophic has happened in your life. So all of us business folks, we really need to have that in the back of our mind when we're making decisions about our businesses and you, you provided some very clear metrics on this is what buyers are going to be looking for. These are the ratios they're going to be running. And um, I thought those were very helpful. Yeah, exactly. Because so many people, like you said, just wake up one day and it's not fun anymore that the more they can plan and the more they can understand just even what their options are. I was just meeting with someone this morning over breakfast and uh, he's 50 years old. You know, he's taken the company from 20 million when he took it over from his family to uh, 40 million. And, uh, but all that weight is on him and, and he, he knows he could grow the business, but does he want to take on more debt? So he's like, I just don't know what to do. I'm like, well, you know, you could sell 70, 80% of the company, take all the chips off the table, get rid of your personal guarantees, have some people help fill in the holes on management, bring a board around you and then keep 20, 30% of new co and now grow the business doing what you love to do without all the stress and having, you know, your money basically already on the sidelines. And he's like, I never knew that even existed. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm looking for, you know, and it's just that sort of thing that now more than ever, um, you know, when I started 25 years ago, it was pretty much, you sold the company, it was hundred percent sale and it was either, you know, maybe a seller note or an earn out tied to it. Well now with private equity, you know, it's becoming so prevalent. There's so much different ways of rolling over equity and, and, and uh, different ways to, save on taxes and, and that you just, you couldn't imagine all the different ways to get out. So that's why I wanted just at a very high level to help people understand what are just the top nine or 10 different ways you could exit and what are the pros and cons of each. And again, no right or wrong, but what, 
what best fits your particular scenario so they can start to understand what some of those options might be. And you asked some tough questions in there that you, you asked the entrepreneur, you know, is there really a successor CEO in your organization? And in the workbook, it was, this, all right, define what you do. And is there really somebody who can do what you did? And, and, and it was all wrapped up in how you have to have a good, strong management team um, to really make this go smoothly, profitably. Um, and when I was going through those questions, they were tough ones because you, you don't ordinarily stop and think along those specific lines. It, it was very useful. Yeah, no, I, and they're exactly right. Because as the saying we have is that, you know, just because you have cash flow or, or, you know, income, that doesn't necessarily transfer into value, you know, because again, if, if you're, if I'm the business and, and, and I'm 100%, you know, I do, I get all the con, con, the new customers and I do all the deals and I do everything. And I've got some worker bees around me that help pick up the pieces. But I, if, if I pull myself out of the company, the thing shuts down in a month then you, you could be making $2 million a year, great income, but you don't have something that's typically transferable or valuable right. to someone else, unless you plan as the owner to stick around for a long time, well, then you might just keep the company. Uh, you know, so it's, it, it's helping them understand that, you know, income doesn't transfer into value, but what are those value drivers that buyers really care about? We've seen some sellers work on items that uh, they think are going to be really cool to this buy, the buyers out there. And the buyer's like, we don't care at all about that. We wish you would have spent all your time over here. He's like, oh my gosh, if I only would have known, I could have saved myself so much time and energy and really grown, you know, grown the business. So that's what we try to do there is definitely hit what, you know, the value drivers are, what buyers care most about. And, and you, you said, you know, one of them is building up that management team, you know, and most people think, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, it's almost, a, you know, it's, you wear it on our sleeve, like, hey, we can do all these different things. We're Superman. But at the end of the day, you know, if you haven't, if you haven't taken a vacation for five years and you're Superman working 60, 78 hours a week, a buyer doesn't want to hear that. They want to hear that, yeah, I was gone for a month and the business did, had its record month and it did just fine. And, and again, people just don't think like that uh, or customer concentration is another you know big killer. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah. yeah, I've grown my business and it's going like this, but you know, my top customer used to be 10%. Now they're 60% of my company. Well, again, you know, the higher the risk, the lower the value. So it, it, that customer concentration, you need to keep it around 20, 20, 25 percent for that top customer. Otherwise, the values change or the structure changes and, and things along that line. So just different tips that we try to give uh, business owners to understand what's really important as they start to get to that fourth quarter and start thinking about uh, what that exit's going to be and when it is. And, and like you said about with with family. Uh, yeah, we, we were lucky enough to uh, to meet some a woman who. Uh, all she has done is study the, the, the traits of, uh, from a psychological standpoint of, of entrepreneurs and uh, all over the country and just wrote a book about it and just brilliant. And we were able to take some of her, some of her surveys and quizzes and say, you know, here, fill this out, you know, see if your son or daughter truly mm -hmm. has this. You know, we, we do in a movie and one of the quotes in the movie is just because you, know, you fell into the lottery of, of your mom or dad being a business owner doesn't mean that you all automatically got that entrepreneurial gene. You know, you might've got it, you might not have got it or, you got it, but you have no passion for what your mom, your mom or dad's industry is, and, right. and it's not going to work out well for anybody. Uh, so many things to consider. Um, our time is up for today, Scott. But I hope we get to do this uh, again. This is a great uh, topic, and I think it's a real value to uh, people who sign into our Trends Talk. So thank you for joining me. And Sounds good. Thank all of you for listening to this edition of Trends Talk. I'm Brian Bolio.